Good morning and welcome to Talking Cafe Live. My name is Lucy Tobias. I am one of the village agents at CCS. Welcome to those people that are joining for the first time and also to those who have been with us um, throughout the Talking Cafes, um, which we started in May. I'm really excited to be joined by David from Red Robin Books, who you can see um, also on the screen with a wonderful array of books and soft toys and excitement behind him. Um, so yeah, welcome David. Good morning, and thank you for having us on Talking Cafe. It's an absolute pleasure. We're, we're really um, excited that you are here. I'm going to give it a couple of minutes because sometimes what happens is um, more people join us live because they get a notification from Facebook that we're live. Okay. So at present, I believe that we have three watchers. <laughs> <laughs> that look like a scout there. Um, we've got three people viewing, um, yet in a moment or so that that will hopefully rise and um yeah so we'll just give it a moment is it nice and sunny with you david as it is we here we've got sunshine yeah we we are just outside langport so we have sunshine at the moment um yeah we'll make the most of that i think it's it's been quite a wet few days hasn't it around uh, around here. it has hit and miss it has it rains back tomorrow isn't it yeah well hopefully on thursday the rain will disappear because <laughs> i've got outdoor meetings so Ooh, yeah yeah okay let's let's go i'm going to reintroduce myself and then i'll pass the baton over to you and you can tell us all about Red Robin. Okay, so welcome, welcome to all of those joining. Um, we have a very exciting talking cafe today. My name is Lucy and I am a village agent with CCS. For those people who are unfamiliar with what CCS is, um, we are a leading Taunton charity that works right at the heart Part of summer communities, supporting individuals and families through a whole wide variety of challenges, issues, and what's going on with them. Um, so today um, I am joined by David um, and Neil will also be joining us from Red Robin Books and we will be doing some story time. Exciting. Um, and we also have a virtual audience who are eagerly waiting in our studio. So over to you, David, to tell us a little bit about yourself and Red Robin Books. Thank you very much, Lucy. So um, as you said, my name is David, David Rose, and I run Red Robin Books, and we are an independent children's publisher based uh, in Somerset, which is outside uh, Langport, and we publish uh, books for children up to about the age of nine, predominantly picture books and some young fiction. Um, and we have some soft toys, some of them behind us, that go with the books as well. Um, most of our books, uh, over 40 of our books, are written by Neil Griffiths, who is a wonderful author, amazing storyteller, and we're all going to meet in a moment, and I hope that you'll all agree how wonderful he is. Um, so during, during lockdown, some of the things that we've been doing uh, we, we have recorded some videos with Neil, reading some of his stories, and they're available on our YouTube channel free. So if you're short of a story um, so at some point, then you can go and view Neil. Um, we've also got some free resources on our website, which you can download and use. Um, and uh, they go with most of our stories, so that sort of extends the story time. And we'll talk a little bit about that later as well. Another thing that Neil um, invented in the past was something called a story sack, where we take a picture book, we put it in a cloth sack and we had soft toys as props and then we had a non-fiction book and a game and audio and it becomes a whole learning and teaching tool uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that as well later and we've also got a story set we're going to give away as a competition uh, later on as well so stay tuned for that one so i'm not going to talk too much more because 
uh, Neil is much more interesting than me. So I will introduce the amazing, uh, extraordinary author, a great storyteller, who's going to tell you about himself, um, a bit about, a bit about what he does, give you some storytelling tips for story times, and yes, he's going to read you a great story as well. So I'm going to shoot that way, and Neil's going to come that way, and um, enjoy. I'll see you in a moment. Thank you very much, David. Good morning. Well, this good is... Good morning, Neil. Good morning, Mr. Griffiths. <laughs> um, this is a, an amazing experience for me because um, I will admit I'm terrified of IT. Um, it, I only started to send emails about three or four years ago, so you can tell the level that I'm at. And uh, are we Zooming? Is this called Zooming that we're on? No, but it's very what? similar. So we oh. are using some technology called StreamYard, and right. we have what um, we call a virtual studio. So you and I are in the studio. It's very chat show-like, you know, yes. think uh, Parkinson or Cilla Black. And then, of course, in, in our virtual studio, we have... Um, some other colleagues and their family. So we've got Hannah and her daughter, Kat and her son, uh, Mel and her, her granddaughter. So they're eagerly waiting in the studio um, and, and looking forward to hearing the story and more about you and what you've okay. brought and created to Red Robin. Well, this is exciting. Well, um, I'm delighted to have the chance to speak to people here in Somerset. I'm actually from Wiltshire, but I drove down this morning and many of my family um, actually live in Bridgewater. So um, it's a lovely place to be and I really appreciate the chance to talk to you all. Um, my background is I used to be a head teacher. Um, and I loved every minute of being a head teacher because, of course, you get to see children every day, and I do miss that. Um, but I had a very lucky opportunity. Um, I happened to be sitting on a train one day, and I thought, hmm, wouldn't it be nice to stick a story in a sack and call it a story sack? Now, that is no great brain, you know, opportunity, but um, I thought, my school, um, they produced the story sacks. They were fantastic. Um, and this was all oh, over 35 years ago. And they took off um, amazingly. And so I then worked for a government agency uh, promoting uh, story sacks and reading with children. But my real, real passion is reading books and loving it. And I was a very lucky little boy because I was brought up by just my father, who was a single parent, but he was the most amazing dad. And I'm glad to say I had many opportunities to say thank you for all he did for me. And I've got a little picture to show you of, now when you see this, yes, I know I used to look like a girl, and yes, I used to have hair. <laughs> this is actually me. Oh, I've got to get it in the picture. Up I go. There I am. If you move back a little bit. There yeah. I am. Look at me. If I go, oh, look at that. See, it's the technology. There I am with my dad. With all that. You just thought I was going to have a lovely head of hair. It's so cool. But there he was, and he read to me every single night. Well, that meant that I um, went to school already an avid reader. And I've also got my best ever i love this story and um, this is my favorite that i had as a child and it's wind in the willows and look at the state of it but i've still got it and my dad um every time i said dad can we have wind in the willows not once did he sigh not once did he go oh not again he always and i just loved it but I was an avid reader because I'd been exposed to so many wonderful stories as a young child. Um, and I know I was lucky because I'm going to depress you a little bit. If I tell you that only a third of parents are currently reading to their children at home. Now, the figure might be better because of lockdown, 
um, because they've, they've been at home with their children. But prior to all of the things we've been dealing with, the number of parents reading to their children had, has begun to drop quite dramatically. So I am passionate about ensuring that children get exposed to good stories read aloud. And everybody can do it, is whether or not you let yourself go. That's the question. And so I thought, well, what could I do to be useful? Well, I thought I'd give you a few tips to ensure that your children love reading because we don't want them to read just because they have to. We want them to read because they want to. And there, there is a formula. It's not 100% guaranteed, but there is a formula that will give children that best chance of loving reading. And why do we want them to love reading? Well, number one, it's fabulous. Number two, your brains will get bigger and more imaginative. But also we know that once children enjoy reading, they then want to do it again and again. And being an avid reader ensures, well, we know, the figures show, children who are avid readers are the ones that do best educationally. But there's, there's much more to it. You know, it's so enriching. So I thought, well, let's give you the three best tips um, and then I will show you how to read the story well but you can all do it the first tip and this is possibly the biggest one you need to be seen reading yourselves because we know that children who come from homes where the adults read they're much more likely to become readers and enjoyable readers and so they need to see you reading but often um, parents and grandparents think, shall I sit there with war in peace and look serious? No. What I want you to do is look delicious when you are reading. I want your whole body language to show what you're reading is absolutely stimulating like no other. And I don't mind if you choose to even read The Heat magazine, because I will tell you, I love The Heat magazine. Um, and don't look at me with that face because I get it every week. I am not embarrassed and I don't care what people think. Yes, I enjoy other things. Of course I do. And during lockdown, hasn't it been heaven? The chance to read all the... I, I've got a big shelf in my upstairs bedroom and I've been slowly making my way through these. Oh, and I'm reading a book at the moment called The Caged Birds. Oh, it was on um, Spring Watch and recommended. It's out of this world. But... I also get the heat caged because it's delicious. Now, when I read this magazine, if you were to look at my face, you would know I'm enjoying it as I'm about to show. <gasps> oh, David, look at her. What, what look at her? What, what's she wearing? I mean, look at her. Oh, it's awful. No, I love this. <laughs> I don't mind what you read. If you enjoy Trout Monthly, I don't mind. If you enjoy chicken monthly i don't mind and you won't even believe it but there is a turkey monthly now do i care what you're reading and i know this is going to sound sexist but unfortunately it's true girls look at this one storage and organizer there's something do you know like david that. organizing is a masculine energy is it? interesting yes because it's, isn't that interesting? A masculine energy. I do energy. love that you have a whole Half variety. Of day. Masculine energy. My goodness. Well, here's a bit of math, masculine energy. Earth Mover Monthly. Look at that. Yes, diggers. that is. We're talking diggers. Now, what you read <laughs> doesn't matter, as long as it's not offensive. It's the way you read it. And, you know, there was someone in my life at school who she she isn't with us anymore but miss sketch was my teacher in infant school and i had her for two years and so i was really lucky but that lady every morning when she came out to collect us from the playground she always came out with her book but it wasn't just that she had a book it was the way she held her book and her thumbs used to caress the cover oh and I used to watch Miss Sketch and I used to think I want to love books like Miss Sketch 
just because of those thumbs, because you knew. And I used to think that every day, because we had a tower in our school, and I thought that's where Miss Skeds used to be reading in a reading tower. It wasn't, it was the water tank, but it doesn't matter. I imagine, and she gave me that feeling inside, and I thought, I want to love books like she does. She was such a role model. So the first tip is that you need to be seen reading. The second tip is that you need to help your children discover what they love too. You've got to light their fire. And can I just say that children, just like adults, enjoy different types of thing to read. Now, our challenge is to help them find what they love and then let them love it. And I highly recommend comics. They are fantastic if you can afford them. You know, I, I can't speak highly enough of the impact of good comics. But I, over the country, you wouldn't believe what children read. In Norfolk, there is a little girl that loves the sugar manufacturer's weekly magazine. Now, it doesn't light my fire, but it lights. And the reason she loves it is her dad works for Tate and Lyle, the sugar people. Now, whatever you love, you've got to help your children find what it is they love too. And one of the things that often happens is parents and grandparents can be a bit controlling. Now, I'll show you what I mean. Imagine that a child is in the library or a bookshop and there's the adult with them. Now, they tell lies. They say to their children, Oh, you've been ever so good, you can choose yourself a book. Now, that is a total lie. They're not going to choose it themselves at all because they edge towards the books and who is looming above them? The parent. The minute they go to select a book, uh, no, 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 no. What have I said? I don't want you to have that one. And then they go for an easy, no, stop choosing baby books for baby girls or boys. Get a hard one, stupid child. And, and then, of course, the deadly one. They go to choose a book that they've had 50 times before. No, you're, no, I cannot, no, we're not having, now, who's choosing that book? Now, can I just tell you what children do when they go to choose books? Um, they often do choose the same one again and again. But you have to practice a face as the adult, and it's this. <laughs> oh, it's one. Oh, look, we're going to have winter. The... Just perform, because it's their favourite. And the reason they're choosing it is, it, it... yes, your finger's up. Oh, go on. It is, it is yes. Like <laughs> you were head teacher. So, so I am very much with, oh, there's a bit of an echo. Um, is it echoing of where you with no, listeners? No echo here. No. Okay, it's just here on my screen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so for me, I really hear all of what you're saying, and I, I love that. Um, the the whole playing with a child. So the wind in the wind um, that you spoke of about and it really resonates with me and I spoke with my mum actually not that long ago who told me that I had a favourite book and the same book was pulled off the bookshelf and as adults we also have that however feigning excitement um, about that to me seems false and of course one doesn't want to be like hold on a minute I need to, I need to get my book which is oh, uh, which is slightly out of, out of view. Actually, these are just books that I, I got recently. They were free books, but they look amazing. Here we've got to go. We've got the song lines. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I get it. I don't, you know, if you've got this and making a horrible face, that is, is, oh, we're reading that again. It's going to disengage the child. But equally, I'm, I'm very much a person that, that falsity is... Um, it, the energy of falsity just doesn't sit right with me. Uh, but so, you know, there's like, oh, great, yeah, you know. But equally like, oh, amazing, it's Wind in the Willows again. It's just, did you get what I'm saying? Yeah, and I, 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 I 
probably over exaggerated my excitement at the 50th times of win. but i i do think there is a lot of performance that goes around and and some i mean rather than say to the child not a game when you know how important that is to them because when children choose their favorite stories it's part of their reading history and that often is a big motivator within them developing that love of reading and so, no, you don't scream and jump up and down and say how wonderful, but you just would probably go, oh, okay, which is okay because it's important for them. You might, but what, what you've got to disguise, because otherwise you do become controlling and the child doesn't feel they're ever choosing their own books. You do have to disguise the fact, oh, not again. And I, and I don't think that's being dishonest. Um, I just I just think it is part of the game that you play. And the other reason that, that often children choose easier books. Now, the number of parents I've heard say, oh, that's a book for babies. Well, often children go back to the books they read previously for several reasons. Number one, they loved them. Number two, that they know they can read them without struggling and that lifts their confidence. And, and what a lot of parents will, will then worry is, well, she knows it by heart or he knows it by heart. Again, that is okay because they're still being exposed to that rich language and, and they often want to revisit that story. The other thing that sometimes children would do is they choose a book that's too hard for them to read and they would struggle on decoding all those words. Now, the only time I say no, because I've got 25 God children, so I've spent a lot of my time you know, choosing books and reading with them. The only time I say no to a book they're choosing is when I know it's got an adult content or inappropriate. And I explain it to them. I go, oh, you've got to be 18 before you're allowed to have that book. And they understand that it's, they're not ready for it. But when they do choose a book that's hard for them, um, I normally say, oh, I'll enjoy that with you as well. Can I, can I read some of it? And I actually help them through it. Um, you know, if I know they'll struggle on words, I sort of pair up with them because I can see, because there was a little boy in Waterstones and he chose a book um, on the Titanic and technically it was going to be very challenging. But I thought, well, we, we can get through this together because he, he's fascinated about the Titanic. So choosing books and helping them discover what they love is pretty crucial. That's that's the second step. So number one, oh, she's waving again. I love it. Go on. Well, I was just putting my fingers up, so I wasn't sure if we were on two or three. Yeah, go through them one oh, yeah. again. So that number, one, number one, be seen reading. Be that role model. Number two, help your children discover what they love and feed their interests. And a lot of a, a lot of parents over the years have said to me, "Oh, I, I can't get anything he wants to." And it's often he. There is a pattern of often boys struggling to get motivated more than girls. It's not. It's not always like that. And what you got to do is you say to yourself, "Well, what's their passion?" And it could be their passion could be Formula One racing. I say, "Well, get anything you can." that focuses in on their passion. And a lot of the time, of course, boys that will be football, that's okay. I don't care if they're reading football all the time at this stage, as long as they are enjoying what they're reading. They will broaden, and boys are different to girls, and they, they mature later, their concentration spans are not as good as girls, and boys often take a dip when they reach 11, 12 with reading, but it comes back with encouragement. And one other thing you need to face with boys is that many men are entirely non-fiction readers. And that's frustrating because you want them to be exposed to fiction as well. But I'd rather they were enjoying what they were reading than reading just for the sake of it. So that's the second thing, find their interest. And then the third thing is you've got to be great at sharing reading with your children. Now, you did notice that I didn't say sharing necessarily books. It's reading, because to me, reading is reading. So if you're sharing the cereal box and what's written on the cereal box, if you're sharing leaflets from a zoo, I don't mind. But that obviously we want them to share books because that, that's central to reading. 
But that third thing is reading well aloud. Now, we can all do it. It's in all of us. So I'm going to focus now on that sharing books with your children. And is this the point where okay for the children to listen to the story? Yeah, if we're we about to start story. Yes, let's do that. Let them hear this story and then I'll pick up on the techniques that I use. Okay. okay. And, and we have an option here where we can bring the audience onto the screen or we can leave them in the studio. Oh, I don't mind. You go for whatever works. Okay. okay. Every, every, give me a thumbs up if you're happy to come on the screen, those in the studio. Okay. Welcome, Mel and B. Hello, Mel. And Henry. Oh, this is lovely. Look at that. This Hannah and Beatrix. Oh, look, hello. Look at you. Isn't this exciting? I've never done this before and I can see you all. Oh, you look lovely. Look at that. Well, children, I used to be a head teacher. Do I look like a head teacher? Do I? Well, I was. Oh, she says I do. Well, I was a head teacher. And I loved it because I got to see children like you every day. But for the past 25 years, I've been going around the world telling mums and dads and grandmas and grandpas all about how to read to children because I was read to by my dad every night. Let's show the children that picture again of me so they can see me. They, they have look. all seen these, I think. But look yes. at me, look. Wasn't I gorgeous? <laughs> Look at that hair. Okay. And I'm in that photograph, I'm reading Rupert the Bear. Isn't that lovely? So I've always loved listening to stories, but telling stories. And so I thought I would do my best to tell you the best story time ever. And you can see behind me are lots of the books that I have written. There's one about the spider in the bath. That's Mrs. Rainbow. And then there's Winnie Wagtail about a puppy with a waggy tail. But the one I love reading the most is this one, Itchy Bear. And he is probably one of my favourites that I've ever written. So I thought we'll do Itchy Bear just for you. So here we go, your very private story. Bear was having a nice long sleep. In fact, he'd have slept all day if he hadn't begun to itch. But this was all. It started between his toes, but then it was behind his ear. Then it was under his chin, and soon, ooh, he was itching all over. I've got to find somewhere to scratch, he thought, because he was going completely mad. And children, he found the perfect rock to scratch a bear's bottom. And when he scratched his bottom, oh, he made a lovely noise. He went. Oh, it was delicious. But just as he got going, oh no, up popped a mole from under the ground. And the mole said, do you mind? I'm digging down here. Go and scrub. Sorry. But then he found a lovely branch to scratch behind his ear. And he went, hmm. Mm -hmm. It was lovely. But just as he got going, oh, would you believe it? An owl popped up. And the owl said, you know I sleep in the daytime. You've woken me up. Go, go and scratch. So oh, dear, dear. Oh, but then he spotted the perfect log to scratch his tummy. Now, I have got a big tummy, which I've carefully disguised so you can't see it. But, oh, he stuck his tummy out like this and he went, ah, oh, it was delicious. But this time, look, there was a squirrel inside the log and the squirrel said, 
I'm trying to count my hazelnuts. How are you supposed to count when you're shaking the log? Well, you cannot. You cannot count if someone's shaking your log. It puts you off. Dear, dear, dear. Oh, but then he found little twigs just right to do between your toes. But a little voice suddenly shouted, Oh, children, who do you think it could be? Any idea who's in that pile of twigs? What do you think? A, a what? Hedgehog. No. Hedgehog. No. Snake? No. Good guessing, no. Shall I show you? Go on. No. It was a millipede. <laughs> it was a, and the millipede. In fact, I'm going to ask Lucy a hard question. Lucy, focus, please. How many legs do you think a millipede has got? A lot, um, thousands. Like the name implies millions. However, I would say thousands. Uh, I would. Lucy, a few thousand. Lucy, is there a chance you could get to the point and give us an answer, please? <laughs> a few thousand is my, is my is my educated guess. Sorry, everybody thinks it's loads and loads. It's actually forty-eight. But you 48. think I know, Lucy? Don't look like that. You're wrong. No. So, I said, of course, I won't take the twig if it's the roof of your house. But then, oh. He found the best tree trunk for scratching his back. But he was a bit nervous by this point, and he thought, oh, hang on a minute. So he looked all around the tree, but there was nothing. So he thought, right. And he got closer and closer, and oh, oh it was good. Oh, up a bit, down a bit. Oh, the, oh it was delicious, but then just... Just as he started to shake the tree, he didn't know that it was an apple tree. And as he shook the tree, you won't believe this, 137 apples fell on his head. <laughs> Poor little bear. Look at this. Can you see his little eyes peeping through? I mean, this just hadn't been my day thought there. But hang on a minute. He suddenly thought, I've stopped itching at last, and I've got all these apples to eat. So he took a bite and went, mm, delicious. Now, I'm going to ask you a really hard question. Now, I'm going to just warn you that it's only been answered in 20 years twice. So let's see if we've got clever people. Grown-ups, you're allowed to join in too. Why do you think the bear was itchy in the first place? Oh, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you suggest that my bear had to be <laughs> but not fleas? <laughs> Ants in his pants. Oh, how rude. <laughs> no, no ants in his pants. Shedding his coat? No, that's another lovely guess, Lucy. A bit more focused than last time, thank you. <laughs> Is Who is dancing? No, these are good guesses, but come on, I'm desperate. He has been better than No, it wasn't mosquitoes. He didn't have eczema. It wasn't poisonous ivy. I'm going to shoot you. See, it's ever so hard. Now get your looking eyes on. I'm going to show you on the very first page what is on his toes. Butterflies. Lucy, we can all say that once we see it. <laughs> it is. It's that butterfly. I know you're saying we could hardly see. Well, I hate to tell you, but the butterfly is on every single page. And it was that naughty butterfly doing the tickling all the time. Oh, 
See, the simplest stories are the best. And that, and do you want to see Itchy Bear? Can you pass? Yes, please. Here is the real Itchy Bear. Now, is that gorgeous or oh, gorgeous? Oh, oh, I love him. And I love him because you can hug him front ways, but then if you're in the mood, go over the shoulder. But if why not go around the tummy? And what's wrong with putting your head on his bottom? What's wrong with it if you want to cuddle him? But he is the most cuddly bear, and I love him to bits. He's the because he's got a little friend that you can see behind me, which is Sneezy Bear. And then up there is the big spider in the bath. So I love soft toys, but this one is my favourite. Is he in the giveaway though, David? No. Do you know okay. what? Is there a soft it? toy in the? In, is there a soft toy in the giveaway? Lucy, will you wait till the end? Um, he unfortunately he used to. Well, he is in a story sack, but story sacks came to an end in terms of their production about four or five years ago. And I used to love this pair because the very first ones that we used to get made, we had them made in the Philippines. And they were actually made by nuns who supported a leper colony. But then with all these safety things that came in, um, but he's no longer in production. So I might love him, but I'm afraid you can't love it. But there will be a prize at the end, Lucy, if you wait nicely. <laughs> So well, David, uh, well, Neil, even, not David, well, Neil, I have a question for you. Of course. How far away can bears smell apples from? Hmm. I would say, and of course, you obviously know the precise answer, otherwise you wouldn't bother asking. I would say <laughs> half a centimetre. Okay. Those in the audience, do you have is that is that your final educated guess now? Here's my final answer, Lucy. Final answer. Okay. Um, those in the audience, do you have have another answer? One centimetre. It's I'll give you a clue. It's quite a long way. Five meters. Five meters from Henry. Oh, no. oh, hang on a minute. Your question. One mile. Your question. One mile. Is one meter. I thought you meant how close mm. can they get and still smell it. You're talking about how far away. How far away? Yeah. It wasn't a clear question. Oh, no. I'm confused. <laughs> I would say a mile. A mile. So, so, so Henry and and Neil have said a mile. Beatrix B and B. Beatrix and B, what do you get? What do you reckon? One meter. One meter. Mm. Beatrix. Just gone five, five miles. Five, five, five miles. miles. Mm. Okay, so amazing. So Beatrix was the closest. Bears can smell apples from a very, very, very long way away. From five miles, they can scent apples and up to 20 miles they can smell food from and go from where they are to that food to eat it oh, isn't that amazing more, there's nothing worse than a show <laughs> no i know you and i david us us adults we, we, we need to know. 20, 20 miles. actually no, where's your facts from um, well, so I watched a documentary um, with Gordon Buchanan, um, which had bears in, and then I've also done some research online. I do like Gordon Buchanan, he's really good. I liked his <laughs> polar bear one. Oh, yeah, his polar bear ones, his bears in Russia, and also his, his big cats in Russia, amazing. Anyway, we digress, I need to bring us back to time. Back to you, Neil. Okay. What, what I'm going to do now is the children can listen to this bit if they'd like to, but this is tips for the grown-ups on how to read the story well. Okay. I think it's really important that the children listen because then they can tell the grown-ups if they're doing it wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, you can tell them off if they're not good. Okay, 
Well, of course, a lot of people, um, they often say to me, oh, Neil, it's all right for you because you're an extrovert. And so it's easy for extroverts to read the story. I'm actually not an extrovert. I know this is hard to believe looking at me now, but I'm very shy. And David will know what a state I was in before I was told I was going to do this. I've been pacing around his front room. So I'm not quite the extrovert you think. But I had a fantastic role model, my dad. And so I'm very lucky when I'm reading stories, I can often hear my dad and how he would do it in my head. Even, you know, he's been dead a long time, but I can still hear his wonderful voice. And so I was lucky to be able to copy him, and it's a natural part. But I do know that for some mums and dads, they, they find reading stories quite hard, and they do get nervous and shy, even with their own children. So there are a few little techniques that I'm, I'm going to go through with you. Now, the most important bit is the way you start the story and how you're holding the book. Yes, thank you, Lucy. Again, showing off, but that's fine. But yes, you do, you hug that book. You've got to look delicious. And my dad, he sometimes used to, oh, he used to do this because he couldn't wait to start. Because sometimes I've seen mums and dads and they go like this, right, come on, come on, quickly, come on. Do you, do you want a story, yes or no? Well, then, come on. No, 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 no. You've got to look like you can't wait. So, ooh, build up that suspense. And also, don't start the story straight away. Just do a little tiny warm-up, like, oh, this is about a bear. I love bears. And he's got an itch. I wonder where that itch might be. I think we better find out. So, you know, a gentle pull in um, so that it's not whoosh, bang, off we go. And then what's really important is the way you hold the book. Now, if you've got young children, they want to sit on your knee. That is great. Or snuggly cuddly. If they like to be under the covers and you're reading, that's fine. If it's a daytime story, yeah, I don't mind. But what's important is that you obviously have the book. Now, I found it quite difficult because I was trying to get it in the screen all the time. But so that your child can look across and see. But don't do what many grown-ups do, and you start to look mentally ill, is they try to read upside down, and their eyes go all scared, staring. So you cannot read upside down. It's impossible, because you start to go, but, 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 but there was... You can't do it. So look across, and then you can see it, and your child can see it. Also, the way you turn the pages is really important. Try not to be rhythmic. Some stories often are rhyming, and that's different, but most are not rhythmic. And, and I'll show you what I mean by rhythmic. This is what a lot of parents will do. Bear was having a nice long sleep. In fact, he'd have slept all day long. He began to itch under his chin. Do, 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 do. Now, this is what will happen to your child's face. So try and reflect what's going on in the story. If you're about to reveal something, you obviously go, he started to itch. Oh, his bottom. If it's an exciting page, go yes, as quick as you can. And, read, and, and also try not to, there, there are a lot of adults that when they're reading stories, it's as if they live near the seaside because they do the lighthouse effect. Hello, and you start to go with it. And others do the wave effect. Do, do. Try not to be repetitive, otherwise you start to drop off. And what I love to do, and I learned this from my dad, sometimes you peer over the page, sometimes come under the page and go sideways. Use every inch of that book. And also, um, I try to turn the book into shapes so that when I'm reading, say, The Hungry Caterpillar, 
I often do this. For caterpillar, I wiggle. For chrysalis, I make a chrysalis shape. And for the butterfly, I fly. I use every single bit of that book to, to really hold your child's attention. Then, of course, what's important is you involve the child. Oh, it's lovely, all popping up. Oh, I can see Cat now. I've got a lovely picture of you close up, Cat. Like your top. It's your colour. Suits you. Suits you. And, and what was your name again, the one in the middle with Mel? Oh, they can't. What's your name? Oh, did you just turn on the speaker so you... Oh, so exciting. What was your name again? Oh, lovely. Um, so involve, all the way through, involve the child. So ask them questions, get them to look at the illustrations, try and get them to predict, well, what's he going to do if he's got a big itch? Well, where will he find to itch that bottom? And they'll make suggestions. Sometimes do sound effects. And, of course, lots and lots of actions. You know, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and you'll notice that one of the biggest things is, is my expression, my expression. And also voice tone. Now, try not, grown-ups, to sound like a dying wasp. <laughs> and by dying wasp, I'm going to give you an example of dying wasp. Oh, we've got a guess who's got a finger up. Yes, Lucy. <laughs> we have a question, David, from the, the exterior audience, those that aren't in the studio. So a lady called Susan has a oh. question for us. Uh, well, for you specifically. Um, so that is, Neil, what is your advice on asking questions do, during the story? And do you think it interrupts the flow of the book? And adults questioning becomes intrusive. I love that. Whoever Susan, is it Susan or Susie? Susan. Sus good girl, lovely question. <laughs> and actually, it's one that is so important. I actually tend to pretty well go through the story as, as best I can. I will stop when the child asks a question. But you are right. The best time to ask those questions is so you don't break that lovely flow and you don't break the, the, you know, the fascination of the story. Do your questions afterwards more than any other time or at the beginning, you know, guessing what might be happening and ask questions then. Do you know about bears? How long is it that they can smell an apple from? Might be a question, might it, Lucy? So, yes, she, and I'm really glad she raised that. Very useful having you, Susan. Where is she? Behind a wall she's somewhere. In, she's in Sterling, actually. She's she's from Sterling, and she's joined... Oh, the little Sterling. Oh. I went up to Sterling. I had a lovely weekend in Sterling. Stay love Premier. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, Susan. Oh, shame you can't see all their faces. So, very, very true. Ask those questions. But back to the voice. Now, here's my rendition of a dying wasp, okay? Bear was having a really nice sleep. In fact, he just slept all day long if he hadn't begun to itch. But it wasn't an ordinary itch. Started the... Now, you're not having... Mm, now, one of the problems is that sometimes when I'm working with adults and saying we need to be a bit more expressive, they become a bit like Joyce Grenfell, who used to be on the television. And they go to the other extreme. And that becomes a bit much. There needs to be a midpoint. But I'm going to put you to the test okay in a moment to see what your voice is so be poised on whatever button you press so i can hear you okay so make sure that that voice isn't like um so let, let, let's see what your voices are like can you press your button so i can hear you oh, this is so exciting right now i want you i want to hear the loudest that you can say itchy I want you to scream it when I say go, so I can hear the top of your voice. Go. Itchy, go. 
it oh, shouted. Shout it. But Lucy, can you do it the quietest you can? Go on, Lucy. Itchy. Oh, Lucy, you were shouting nearly. <laughs> Quieter. Oh, Lucy, that was lovely. But can you now? So, Neil, just to let you know, we're on a time check. We've got eight minutes. I'm nearly there. <laughs> um, now, can you do itchy, um, grown ups and children, the deepest you can? Go. Itchy. Oh, itchy. Like but can you now do it the highest you can, like a pixie? Oh, now can you do it the quickest you can? <laughs> now the slowest. Oh, that was lovely. So, and then of course we've talked about voice, but your face. Oh, face is so important. So I'm just going to test you out to see if you're good. Can you say itchy as if you are really shocked? Ready, steady, wait for it, please, cat. Hold back, dear. Ready, steady, go. Oh, what was that? Itchy. Look at me. Itchy. Ready, steady, go. Itchy. Lovely. Now, can you do it um, as if you are really angry? Go. Oh, we're getting good. We're getting good. So make sure that that face is really, really expressive. Yeah. Because if you read well, it's one of the greatest gifts you can give children. Mm -hmm. Now, I have loved this. Lucy, thank you so much. I was When you asked me, I said yes. And then I thought, why did I say it? <laughs> but I'm not as scared about technology now as I was because I've never, ever done this before. And you've lifted my spirits because, unfortunately, I had a bad bout of COVID and ended up in hospital. No. And so I had a real rough oh. ride on oxygen and all sorts. Oh, but yeah. this has lifted my spirits because I haven't seen children for months. Grown up, you look lovely. You do. <laughs> but most of all, it has been lovely seeing the children. So thank you so much for having me. I've loved it. And I'll do it again if you ask me. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much. Love to have you back. Thank you. I'm handing you to David to finish off, okay? Because it's prize time. Bye. Bye. Who's excited by prize time? <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you didn't go on too long. All good, all good. We loved the tips, we loved the story, and now we're very, I'm very excited about the prizes. Those in the audience, are you excited about the giveaway and what David's got to share? So what we're going to give away is one of our little story packs. So this is in the bag. So in the bag, we have Panda, Boo Boo, Boo Boo the Panda. We've got uh, four picture books that come for all about Boo Boo. There is uh, a game, a lotto game that you can play. Mm. There's loads in here. Uh, poster, Boo Boo poster. Some uh, plastic animals for counting fun. And also there are some resources so questions to ask about the stories as you read them and instructions on uh, the game as well. So we're giving one of those away and we might give a couple of um, second and third prizes away of some Itchy Bear books as well, which we'll get Neil to sign before he leaves us today. Um, so all you need to do... Lucy, just before Neil. I... Do, I'm sending you an Itchy Bear book signed because you uh, told us that story about how long they can smell from. So thank I'm you very much. Thank you, you very much. There. Thank you so much. Um, Neil, somebody in, in our exterior audience on the Facebook has asked whether they oh. can hire you for children's parties. You've been that popular. <laughs> Do you know, no I, I, I've been asked that so many times, and I adore children. I do, but I could, 
but I couldn't think of anything worse than a party. Sorry. But I love them, but not at parties. You're not so, a party ring fan. So to win, so to, to enter the competition, back to the competition. So to enter to try and win a prize, um, like us on Facebook, so like Red, Red Robin Books Facebook page, and then DM me the word boo. Uh, so DM me the word boo, and uh, we'll keep that running to the end of the month. And then we'll draw out a winner and they will win that little story pack and a couple of runners that will win some signed copies of itchy bear um if you can't wait that long you can go onto our website um and you can you can buy books from there we've got a discount code as well which i don't know whether you might run it on that screen or not but um you can get 50 let's see we can we can, we can add it Yes, yeah, well, RRB 1520, you'll get 15% off if you buy online. Um, there are some free resources on there of Itchy Bear, the, the story that Neil just read. You can download those and um, there are, you can make your own Itchy Bear um, hand puppet and butterfly. They're all on there. There's lots of other things on there as well to do with Itchy Bear you can download. And as I mentioned earlier, there, Neil has pre-recorded some story times of him reading some of his books which are on our youtube channel um so you can you can go and view them whenever you want uh they are going to be there forever and free um and I think david can i just double check that so it's rb fifteen twenty. rb rb 1520 is a discount code um if you buy online from red robin books and we Thank are you. you can find us on social media so we're on facebook we are on uh instagram we're on twitter uh we'd love to have you on our journey we're all neil we're always tweeting about neil neil's always about doing things um he, he travels the world he didn't really mention that maybe he could do that next time but he he goes all over the world storytelling plenty of adventures there so hopefully you might invite us back another time and um i hope you've enjoyed today i hope you enjoyed neil it wasn't too much chaos, chaos for you, um, but I hope you had a, had a good morning and you enjoyed it. So, so yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, David. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Mel and B, um, Kat and Henry, Hannah and Beatrix. Thank you, everyone that has watched live and on replay. Um, it's so great to have you here, and we really hope that you uh, take something from this um, and it helps to. Um, engage children in story times we will put the details of the competition up in the comments and um we'll respond to comments that are made um after the this is is no longer live um as and when we see them thank you everyone and it's goodbye from me and goodbye from them goodbye bye bye